Hello, everybody. Welcome to 10 Questions with Lily Bell. Hopefully, oh, wait. Oh, I think she's here. Hi. 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 Sorry. I, um, this is my first time doing this, so I'm like trying to figure it all out, and I don't know why it wasn't no. allowing you in before, okay. but here you are. Yay. Yeah, yeah Thank I'm you here. so much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, and thank you for letting me be your guinea pig. I know, I'm excited I am to do your too. first one like um, this. I think this is, I've done, so full disclosure, I've done one of these before with Joanna Angel last week, but we did it on TikTok and I did not like it on TikTok. So I think Instagram is going to be the way to go. So this okay. is my first one on Instagram. So you're definitely my Instagram guinea pig. And um, yeah, I think this is going to be fun. Okay. All right. Well, first off, how are you? I am good. I'm a little tired. I worked pretty late last night for a shoot. It went for a very long time. But uh, other than that, I'm good. I have uh, just been lounging with my dog all day and just I don't uh, enjoying my rest. Was it a feature? No, it was okay. like a little mini vignette, but there was just a lot of moving parts, a lot of different setups for different scenes. And um, yeah, and then, we, you know, I think we ended maybe, it wasn't too late. We ended around like 10, but we started around 10. So it was like a, a full. Is, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's actually up there it's funny at nine. Like, yeah, so 13. You know, I feel yeah. like people who work, you know, a regular job and nine to five think like, oh my God, a 12 hour day, that's absurd. And to me, like a 12, when you work, especially in the porn industry, you're kind of like, oh, 12 hour days. Like, no, it's definitely not, you know, it's, you want to do like, I'm usually 10 hours. If I'm lucky, I'm eight, but like 12 is like not mm -hmm. shockingly long for me, but it is actually an insanely long time. Yes. Yeah. And especially if you have yes. a lot of 12 hour days, like if you're just doing a bunch of those, all of a sudden it can just. Yes. It yeah. can get no long, absolutely but... well what's the longest day you've ever had on set i'm just curious this is not one of my 10 questions but i just just curious hmm. it's a good question you know i've had something recently that's happened a couple times where i have been asked to leave set and then come back so if you count maybe the time like where so i've been asked to leave where i i had to leave for maybe three to four hours maybe five and then i was called back for sex at that point we were having sex around midnight and that it was fun. yeah <laughs> but yeah. yeah yeah that's just what you do long so. stay on set was yeah. 18 hours once for a wicked movie and that was that was pretty rough okay well, I was quite, that was a wicked oh, yeah. thing that I was just No, surprise <laughs> there. A little theme no there, there, yeah. Yeah. Well, those yeah. are, you know, like generally big movies, lots of dialogue, lots of moving parts, like you said. So it's to be expected. Yes. Okay. Well, let's get to our 10 questions. So for those of you who are just joining us, I'm doing this 10 question series a little bit differently than I do um, my usual, like, you know, long form podcasts. These are less about um, the adult industry and more about like Lily as a person. So these are kind of more personal, intimate questions, um, which I think is really fun because, you know, we all know her as the gorgeous adult starlet that she is, but like, do we really know Lily Bell? Like, do we really? So um, these questions are designed to dig a little bit deeper. Okay. Okay, so Lily, my first question to you is, what is your greatest accomplishment in life? I think, I think my greatest accomplishment, accomplishment in life so far has probably been just becoming completely self-made and just really just getting into my adulthood and being completely on my own. And I think that is something I look back on where I've worked other jobs or I've done things I'm just barely scraping by. And it just seems like yeah. there was no end to that. And now I feel really grateful because I can have anything at my fingertips if I, if I really need it. And I just think that is. Yeah. Success. I mean, that's, and that's a really cool. funny, fun thing about being a creator these days and with the technology that has given us access to basically be like small business owners and you know it's interesting because there's the people who have you know kind of like the nine to five like my husband's one of them and he can depend on a steady paycheck mm -hmm. it's always the same you know and 
in, in one way I can see like, it's nice to know that like, you're always going to get paid the same amount of money and everything's always going to be the same. And there's some security right. in that. But for someone like me, and I imagine probably for someone like you, um, there's something very thrilling about like not knowing what you're going to make next week. You know what I mean? It could be a lot more. It could be a lot less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it kind of always feels different. like there's more yeah. opportunity for growth, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think the opportunities are really endless. And the more that I go into the industry, there's just so many different paths that mm -hmm. one can jump yeah. down. And I think that's very, especially really get to know everybody and you know start doing different things like one thing that I've always wanted to do and some people think this is not the best idea but I don't see why mm -hmm. is uh, I've always wanted a PA and just do that side of things I've always wanted to write a script you know there's little things like that where you start doing those little things you, never you know I have to say I think that's actually I'm going to tell you like somebody you know who's worked behind the camera for a long time that's a very good idea because Yes, please get paid shit. Mm -hmm. um, but you learn so much. And honestly, what you learn, like the learning is what's invaluable, like that information. And, right. you know, especially with all these, you know, all these new media platforms, there's always going to be a need for content. And that's kind of like the one area that you can get into where if you can master running a camera or um, directing or styling or art direction. I mean, there's so many avenues you could go down, you know, and a PA yeah. is just basically there helping on set, mm -hmm. but you could find, you know, from that, that baseline, what works best for you, what attracts best for you. And then like, there's no end to where that can go. And that can lead like out of the adult industry, you know, you can end up working in a completely yeah. different, um, like a mainstream or something. And yeah, I just think that the learning opportunities there are really great. It's all, all about who you mm -hmm. know. You could be a talent liaison. You could work at design. You could eventually do makeup. You can oversee things. Like, I mean, and you know, the thing is too, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. see is the corporate side of everything. Like a lot mm -hmm. of this is incredibly corporate. And I think that is yeah. also something that I never realized, but wouldn't get into it. It's like, oh, wow, there's... A lot yeah. of office work that I'm doing, actually. Taxes, you know, computer yeah. work. Yeah, and also, too, I think working behind the scenes like that will also make you a better model and performer because once you start to understand how the other side works, I know for me, like, when I work with models who have experience behind the camera, whether it be camera work or directing, like, they understand what I'm trying to get, and I just feel like we flow much better. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say that I think that's a... A swell idea okay my next question yeah. for you um this is this is kind of a heavy one so uh if you could change one thing about the world what would okay. it be oh god that one's really intense i mean the first thing that obviously comes to mind for me is climate change i mean that's something that is on my brain 24 <clears> 7 <throat> it's a big reason um you know i would be a little bit worried to like start a family eventually because I don't want to start a family anytime soon it would be later on and I just feel the longer I wait I just get nervous that like I don't know I just don't see anything getting better and it just makes me a very pessimistic person which is something I don't want to be but at the same time as you like pull apart this onion of climate change I just don't know where the solution mm -hmm. is because it's so mm -hmm. far it, out it, of our like hands. It is and it isn't and, you know what I mean? Like there's, right. it's such a big problem, but there's so many people contributing to the problem and getting everybody to change their minds to, yeah. you know, before. Yeah. It could be possible. And I don't want to give up hope. I just feel a little bleak about it. So I just think that is something I really, really wish I could change in the world is making us care more about our earth yeah that, and the hardest thing is too is of thing. course people generally don't care until like the results are right in their backyard right and that's just how human beings operate but yeah trust yeah. me i feel you on that like you know before i had a kid i was like who wants to bring a kid into this world and then i brought a kid into this world and now i'm like shit <laughs> well now you make the world yeah good for your kid you know you want to make sure that 
yeah you know they're protected yeah. and that yeah. they feel safe. Um, you know but you try I try to have like yeah. faith in humanity right I mean we we've, we've been able to invent and we've been able to accomplish incredible things I try to also remind mm -hmm. myself it's mm -hmm. funny actually Adriana Chechik brought this up when I was interviewing her and and I think about this often is that like, I think mm -hmm. we also have to be cautious about the 24 hour news cycle that we are on and all the media that we're constantly fed and remember yeah. that it's fear that sells, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a lot of that yeah. negative, those negative headlines because that's what sells. Also like it's, it's kind of also good to, to, to wake people up and you know, like this, a lot of those headlines are relevant, like, yes. No, but we're inundated. inundated. Like it is just over. Like it, when our brains can't even comprehend the level of like things that we're seeing every day. So we just see that, and then we become numb to it. And the thing is, is we can't really become numb to it. But also, we need to be yeah. able to live our day to day lives because yeah. the world just yeah. keeps turning. So. Uh, okay. Yeah. Next question. Uh, what is the biggest mistake you've made in your life, and what did you learn from it? Well, the first thing that comes to mind for my biggest mistake of my life was, uh, you know, I used to drink and drive a lot when I was younger, and I fortunately wasn't dr drunk to the point at the this point when I got pulled over, but I got a DUI. And I had to do the whole process. And luckily, it was my first offense. So I got it reduced to a negligent driving in the first degree. But I still had to pick up trash on the side of the road for two days. I still had to do all the classes. I had to pay for a lawyer to do all. I mean, it lasted six to nine months. Uh, and it was just, it was an intense process. And I was just turning 21. So I was just partying. And I was working at an office in the time. And I was not making money to support that. It was just, uh, it was a big, big mistake. And I was getting fingered while I was driving. That's why we got pulled over. I was going, Sorry. I I was going 80 in a 60. Yeah, I know. The, the story took a turn. Yeah. So that's what happened. And I just, I forgot that we were even pulling off to have sex because I had never really? been pulled over in my life before at that moment. So that was my first time ever, ever being pulled over. I didn't even know what my registration really looked like. So I asked the cop, I said, do you know what it looks like? And at that moment, he was like, have you been drinking? And I yeah. can't lie. Like, I'm not a good liar. So I just said, um, no, I mean, maybe uh, uh, a little bit. Yeah. And then yeah, that, we were off. That's rough. That's point. rough. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so that was a big, big mistake that I made and uh, that I have learned from to, and then, you know, something that my lawyer said, she said, everybody drinks and drives. Unfortunately, yeah. you and, just got caught. And you were yeah, doing something I mean, reckless. As somebody, so. you know, who used to drink and drive a lot, like, you know, it was, I mean, I look back now and like, yeah. I just, I mean, there were times when I drove that I literally had to hold a hand over one eye to stop my vision from blurring. I mean, I was bad. Like, I'm so lucky that it didn't hurt anybody yeah. or kill somebody. And I think back on that with a lot of shame now. And I'm so grateful that, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't cause any serious ir irreparable harm and um, definitely something to learn from for sure. So, yeah. okay. Uh, my next question, do you believe in God or any form of it? Um, yeah, I believe in a higher power. I believe that would be, uh, agnostic. I think, agnostic I think that's like, where, yeah, you yeah, believe I mean, something it, it, above something or. Right. Agnostic, I think is kind of like, you don't know, or like you're undecided. Yeah. I don't know. I was raised Christian. Uh, I did a lot of different things. I was raised at, like a uh, vacation Bible study school. I did something called Awanas, which is like. Girl Scouts slash Boy Scouts, but about the Bible. So, like, you earned badges and stuff on this vest. So, I did certain things like that. I did overnight camps. But I just remember the whole time sitting there thinking, even at a young age, at, like, age seven, like, is this what we're supposed to be believing? Is everyone else around me actually believing that this is really true? How do we know for sure that this is true? And then Vacation Bible Study School was like, you need to go out out and tell your friends about Jesus and then come back and tell us how that experience was. And I remember thinking like, that seems very like 
I didn't know what the word was at age seven, like invasive, but it's like, you know, to be telling my friends that what if they don't want to hear about it, you know? So I always thought that was interesting. So I believe that there's something up there. Like when I'm in a lot of pain or things like that, like I pray to God, I talk about God sometimes. I'm like, it is something, um, but I don't know what it is. So I would say, I believe that there is something, um, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't so that's know. interesting. When did you, was your family pretty religious? And when, when did you start to kind of break away from the idea of being like a part of the church? Well, well my dad's gay. So when I started going to church a lot and I would go to this, you know, over like after school, like extracurricular stuff, I had an ex next door neighbor and she ended up telling me that my dad was going to go to hell and that, you know, all this different things. So I came home and told my mom, I said, Sandy said that, you know, dad's going to go to hell and blah, blah, blah. And my mom was like, we are not having that. And she marched right over to her house and I wasn't able to hang out with them anymore. And I wasn't able to be there. And then, so I remember I stopped kind of going to that church and then we moved away. But my dad actually liked going to church. My dad, that was gay. I remember we went to this spiritual Christian church mm. that talked a lot about auras and it was more like holistic. Uh, I liked that church, but I still didn't really understand. Like some of my parents, my mom and my dad, they went to church because they liked a relationship with God and they got things out of the services. I don't mm -hmm. think they really believed in Jesus himself. My stepdad is a different story, I think. So my stepdad was Lutheran, sang in a choir, was a little more involved. And so I think he believed in Jesus, but I never really believed in Jesus himself. I just like to believe that something has to be up there. But uh, one last thing I'll say about this subject, my mom's uh, grandpa was in a concentration camp. And because of that, he is like super atheist. So my mom was never allowed to talk about anything God related because he's like the things that I saw, there's no way that God exists. So you will never talk about wow. Jesus in my household. So my I wanted to have a relationship with Jesus right. because she yeah. never knew because of that, but she doesn't really have one. Yeah. She just I mean, got and there's something the to be church. said of having like faith and I don't know, there's some kind of, like, master design, right, that we're not just, like, all, like, hurtling towards chaos, you know, constantly, um, and also, too, I, I do, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not religious at all, I was raised atheist, actually, my dad was very atheist, um, but there is something about that mm -hmm. community that church provides, and we don't have that, like, really, yeah. these days, you know, I think that people, mm -hmm. especially now in this new age of technology, and, you know, big cities and not knowing your neighbors and feel a real, you know, lack of sense of community. And I think that that's, that's what people, I think people really need that, honestly, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it, I, in a way, I, I do think organized religion is the devil, but at the same time, I do see that there is some good things out of it, you know, like what you just said, like it does bring a sense of yeah, community. Yeah, I think and probably, lot, you so. know, the yeah. idea of maybe setting up organized religion was maybe created with good intentions, but you know how human beings mm -hmm. just tend to ruin everything. <laughs> Someone came in and, you know, people get power yeah. hungry and it just always gets weird. Someone always just yeah. fucks it up, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I okay. Completely agree. Uh, what is your greatest fear? I think um, my greatest fear is probably not being like fully content and, and happy one day. Like I worry like because like sometimes people ask me in an interview, like, where do you see yourself in five years? And where would you like to be? And I always say I would like to be content and happy and I would like to not be searching anymore. So I, I'd say one of my biggest fears is is never finding that. Like I feel like I, I'll always feel not satisfied and I wish that sometimes I would. Like I, I just feel that I always get bored or there's always something that makes me 
I don't know. Like, I just want to, I want to truly, truly feel happy and content. So I guess I'm fearful that that yeah, will ever like happen. Settled. I, I will say that with my many years of experience, because I'm so ancient and wise, um, <laughs> I struggle with that as well. And I've, you know, been in so many places where I'm like, oh, if I just get here, I'll be happy. And then I get there and then I'm like, not as happy as I thought I would be. And then I'm like, oh, the next benchmark. And then I get there, I'm like, yeah. not as happy as I thought I would be. And I think the the key, and believe yeah. me, I am not there yet, is finding um, like joy and happiness and contentment in the present. I think it's like, once we stop like searching outside of ourselves for all of these like people, places and things that are supposed to like bring us joy and, and make us who we are is when we truly become um, happy. And I think that's kind of like life's journey. You know what I mean? Like that's what we spend our entire life like trying to figure out. And I don't know if anybody ever truly gets right. there. So. Mm -hmm. I know either you, you're surrounded by people that say things like it's always downhill from here or it's always, you know, but, but at the same time, it's like, it's all something we can't escape. So it'd be really, really great if we all looked at it like it wasn't that way. Like, that's something also, like, I'm total ADD here, but, like, I think about, like, the beauty industry and, like, you know, how we all try to not age or we do Botox and we do all these things. And I think to myself, like, what if we all really did just not do that and then we all, like, embraced age and we looked at it like it was something, like, it was good. Like each wrinkle, we were like, wow, that's great. The thing is I get Botox. So the thing is like, I'm not like saying that I won't be part of that. I, I get it. So I'm like part of the whole thing, but it's like, I just think about sometimes like, what if we didn't do that? And we looked at it. Right. Toxic. Yeah. Can't oh my escape God. It. I, I feel you so hard on that. So it's so funny. I just went and saw my lady last week and she does like mm -hmm. my Botox and the, the little bit of filler that I get. Yeah. And I asked her, and I love her because she's mm -hmm. very light-handed and she, like, doesn't do too much. And, like, she won't right. let me, you know, like, she's one of those people who's like, no, I'm not giving you those fucking lips. Like, get out of here, you know, stuff like that. So I like her for that. Okay. And I asked her, she was, like, working on me. I'm like, when do I finally, like, give in to the aging? Like, when do I decide, like, you know, obviously I'm going to keep seeing you to try to, you know, maintain a certain you know, age appropriate look, but like, when do I go, okay, like that wrinkle is like, we're not going to try to get rid of that anymore. We're going to let that be. And we're going to let that ride because like, I don't want to end up looking like Madonna, <laughs> you know? And it's like, if you continue to do that into your fucking seven sixties or seven, like you will. So like, how do we, how do I yeah. accept like certain things about my face and my aging and like, mm -hmm. you know, try to improve certain things, but let other things go. I don't know. I'm like, how do we, she's like, and she just kind of, I think she was kind of like, uh, I, I don't know. There's no right or reason to any of it. Yeah. You just have to finally be like, fuck it, man. I'm not going to do it anymore. And cause the, the, the next step is like, cause like my mom is a little bit at that point where filler and Botox aren't doing the exact thing she wants. Like she almost yeah. needs to go to the facelift type thing. And I said, that's yeah. a whole different ball game, you know? And I, I don't know if you won't need to do that. It's just not. Yeah. And for what, you know? And then a lot of times, it doesn't look that good. I, I, there's some, like, I've seen a few Real Housewives where they paid, like, a good amount of money. And I'm like, yeah. oh, wow, that actually doesn't look bad. But I Yeah, mean, and I think it also depends lot, on so. the person. I think different procedures look different on different people, and some people just take it better. So yeah. it's like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get bit mm -hmm. by that plastic bug, and yeah. sometimes it's over. Yeah. So we're about halfway through the question. Go. So everybody watching live, I just want to let you guys okay. know, I am going to take one question from the audience for Lily at the end. Um, I have Masha like watching the comments. So she'll write down questions that we can revisit at the end. So if you do have questions or actually better yet, go ahead and put them in the little question box and um, we'll pop them up and look at them at the mm -hmm. end and she'll pick one of your questions. So just wanted to let everybody know that. Okay, uh, next question. What is your best characteristic, do you think? I think my best.
best characteristic is um, at the end of the day, I feel like I really stand up for mm -hmm. myself and what I believe in. I think that's a really good characteristic of mine. I think some people might look at it sometimes like I'm loud, um, but I think for the most part, I feel like I stand up for what I believe in and I feel like that is a really good characteristic because I'm loyal to myself and that I'm also loyal to others. And, so you're good at like establishing yeah, boundaries. Think that. Yes, you know, yes and no. So I would say like, you know, sometimes on set, no, but like with other ways, like, yes. And I feel like I've gotten better about it. You know, certain things with sex work has made me be better. Like I've watched some of how I've taken some boundaries, like when I used to strip and stuff and how rough that was in different ways, like, cause your boundaries are always being pushed. And now I'm getting better at calling shit out and being like, no, mm -hmm. that's not what's happening. And I've had happened before and it's yeah. not going to happen again and i think that's yeah a good it's, characteristic yeah, I mean, to have boundaries yeah. is, and standing up for yourself is is hard man that's like a lifelong struggle and i think a lot of people yeah. struggle with that so if you're like already feeling like you're making progress in that area at your age i would say that's very good okay yeah. what do you think is your worst characteristic Mm, it almost could like play off of that a little bit too. Like I, I think sometimes I have a little bit of an attitude problem that I need to watch sometimes. Um, sometimes I can get a little snappy. So I think one of my characteristics recently, like I just, I'm very reactive. Like I need to work on that and I need to like make sure I'm eating properly so that I'm not getting hangry and then having other people suffer from it because that's not their problem and I whenever I'm dating someone I seem to make that their problem and they're like did you eat anything and I'm like no you know and so I that's so I need to you know just I think sometimes my attitude is is something that uh, needs some yeah. okay some tweaking uh times. what is your biggest yeah. pet peeve I don't like listening to people too I can't stand it. I know that's a classic one and everyone says it, but like, I swear to God. And I even catch myself smacking sometimes. And I'm like, oh my God, stop. Cause my mom would get mad at me about that. But I remember my stepdad, he used to order these bagels and he'd put these, these <laughs> keys on it and he would sit there at the table and just smack and I couldn't stand it. And so now like some people that I'm around, I'll hear it. Like there's certain things I can remember from my life where I'm just like, Oh, I can't stand that sound. The worst is when <laughs> people have like feet. squeaky teeth when they chew and it's like nailed mm -hmm. on the chalkboard. It's, it's, it's excruciating. I don't, I, uh, I honestly don't know what you're referring to. I, I don't think I've like heard. My, my dad, before he passed away, he had like squeaky teeth. Like he got his teeth fixed. And after that, mm -hmm. and he always sat next okay. to the dinner table and I would be like, it's just like squeak. It's like a. It's, it's, it's literally like a, like a balloon. Like it's but worse. It's terrible. It's ter if you ever one day yeah. you're gonna be like eating and someone next to you's gonna be chewing loudly and they're gonna have squeaky teeth. And be like that's what she meant. And it's gonna drive you up the fucking yeah. wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's yeah. All that I can focus yeah. on just over and uh, over. Yeah. Okay, what makes you happy? Um, my dog really makes me happy. Um, my dog, I honestly feel like saved my life a little bit. Um, I was in a really, really dark place and I was, you know, my dog, my mom was like, you know, I'm going to gift you this dog. It's important and you're scaring me a little bit. So I, I need you to have this dog. So I uh, really feel that my dog makes me happy. I love him a lot. I spend a lot of time with him. And um, what else makes me me happy I think spending time with my friends and family makes me really happy I know exerting my body makes me feel happy and that's something that I haven't been so like, doing lately and like exercise that's natural yeah. yes and I, I, I I've been doing like I went on a hike just recently so I did that so I was like okay if you run up this hill you'll feel better and then I did and then I felt better mm -hmm. and I'm like wow mm -hmm. magic how that happens so I just like need to get myself to the gym I just like I just can't yeah. right now I don't know what it is it's, so I get that I you go through like those phases yeah. where you're like very 
committed and then once you get off that that train and you, you get like back in the slump it's so hard to <laughs> pick yourself back up and get back into that but yeah it's like they say the hardest thing about exercising is you know putting like putting your shoes on because you like never want to mm -hmm. actually go but then when you go and you do it you feel so much better afterwards but it is hard to get there the hardest part is getting there and then once you're there yes. you never regret a workout ever and i swear though that is one those are like quotes that you always hear because it's true unless you like yes. physically injure yourself then that would yes. suck, but <laughs> okay uh last question for me um what do you think is the most important quality in another person whether it be like your partner or a friend or someone you work with uh mm. empathy i think it's really important to have a lot of emotional depth and intelligence think you need to be able to put yourself in another person's shoes um i also think you need to be able to like recognize when you're wrong um that's something i need to work on at times uh and yeah so what, what would that be called humility like where you're just able to yeah i think that that's a really good thing that was what was the exact question what, what do you, do you think want in a partner and, and things like that person. yeah 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 i think those are really important okay always. so that's my 10 yeah. questions so i have a couple here from the audience um i think i'm going to ask this middle one here okay uh if you could talk to your 10 year old self what do you think they would say oh wow well i think they'd be a little surprised the type of route that i went down um, I know my 10 year old self wanted to be a speech therapist by day and a Victoria's <laughs> Secret model by night. And that was something that I like really was gunning for. So I was always wanting to like be, you know, a center of attention and be like known. And so I think myself would be a little shocked at what I'm doing. But like, I swear, like when I was a kid, I remember being like, everyone will know your name one day. Like I remember feeling that and knowing that. And then all of a sudden I started doing things and being like, okay, your life's not really leading to anything that's happening like that. I think you'll just lead a normal life and it'll just be normal. And then all of a sudden I started doing this and then I was like, maybe that's what I was thinking about when I was a kid. And now all of a sudden that's, I, I don't know, but it was just something that's odd. And not that everybody knows my name, but in a way, yeah. There yeah, are some people sure. that know my name, yeah. and I guess that's kind yeah, of like I mean, you're also like yeah. very early in your yeah. career too. Yeah. And, I mean, okay, so like aside yeah. of like the context of what you do for a living, because I think obviously at that age you're not thinking like in. The, I mean, look, like I grew up the daughter of pornographers, and I still didn't think I was going to end up in the industry. You know what I mean? Like, so right. so so besides no, totally. like the actual like content. The, that you shoot specifically, like just in, in terms of being like your own boss and being like a, an entrepreneur and being a model and, you know, being able to work on your own brand and make those kind of like personal decisions in terms of your career. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, that that would have appealed to your 10 year old self? Do you think that that was something that maybe you thought you would achieve one day? Yeah. Um Maybe I, you know, I always saw a very traditional life for myself, even though I, I you know, and I don't really know, like, I, I try to think back, like, I remember, like, also, like, what my mom wanted for me, like, my mom wanted me to, like, be on Broadway and, like, live in a ratchet apartment with a bunch of girls and audition huh. and try to, like, do that whole fame thing. And I remember being like, that's not what I'm going to be doing exactly, because I went to an art school and I danced for a while. So I saw myself maybe doing certain things like that and then yeah I don't know I, I I think I would have liked being my own boss but I don't think I could have even processed yeah. like what that meant like I think if I told my all the things that I was doing I think my head would have my 10 year old head would have exploded and been like oh wow you know um but yeah. I think my 10 year old self would be happy and very proud and would look get all the things I've done. And this is also something I should remind myself is like, yeah, my 10 year old self yeah. would be really. It's funny because I think so. about that question. 
And when I was a kid, younger than 10, probably, one of my favorite, like, I used to always play, like, pretend by myself. It was really weird. I didn't necessarily like playing with other kids. Cause I always, like, didn't get the fantasy right. Yeah. But one of them was, like, I like to play, like, the boss. Mm-hmm. So I used to put on, like, an outfit okay. and, like, steal one of my mom's, like, sport jackets and, like, get a desk and i get, like, a, pho- oh, a yeah. fake phone and, like, papers. And I literally, because I, like, didn't know, yeah. I thought that, like, being a boss was just picking up the phone and yelling at people and telling them that they were doing a shitty job and then firing mm-hmm. people and telling them, like, this is not adequate. Well, and it's like, you you know, as a kid, you're so impressionable. So you watch things that you see around you and you just go, oh, well, that's My that. My sitting over there <laughs> laughing her ass off because that's probably her, how she feels about, like, how I actually do, like, that, conduct business. But, so yeah, that's funny. what I thought being a boss was. It was, like, just sitting there and, like, being angry with people and being frustrated at everyone and, like, telling people that they weren't doing a good job. I mean, you're not wrong in a way. There, that is just how bosses operate a lot of the time. I think like modeling my mother a little bit, you know, like watching as she was and like yeah. thinking that's the right way to be. And my my mom was not an easy person to right. work for. <laughs> well, and it's also too, the way that a lot of media, like in things that we saw, like on movies and TV shows is like the boss yeah. sometimes. So yeah. Fucking dick. That's like so how you get, just, that's how you get ahead in life. I mean, right? I've dealt with being an asshole. I can think of a few women that were bosses of mine that, like, if I ever saw them in person, like, I would maybe say something to them and be like, you know, the way you made me feel was just, like, so awful. And I still think about it to this day. But one thing that one of them did, and this is someone I worked with at Macy's, and she would get mad at me because I would get frustrated about the register, and and I'd be like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. And she'd be like, if you just slowed down and read your screens, then you would know what it was saying. And I'm like, okay. And so I apply that sometimes a lot in life, and my mom sometimes says that to me and be like, remember what Sandy said? Because, like, sometimes if I just slow down, calm down, and read what's in front of me or process what's in yeah. front of me, then I can answer my own question instead of getting so frazzled and frustrated yeah. when it's just like, Oh my God, I can't chill. tell you how many times so. I've gotten like work emails from like clients who are like, blah, 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 this, this. And I'm like frustrated and stressed out. And I read like half of it. And then I do like a knee jerk response where I respond and then, mm-hmm. you know, in like some snippy asshole manner. And then like, I see in the email, the answer yeah. to my question was in there or something. And then I, like, feel like such an idiot, and I have to call up and be like, sorry, I didn't read the whole email. Uh, Like, yeah, yeah, just fucking, like, like that's one of the key, like, lessons, I think, especially working in business is, like, do not react right away. Like, like, do not respond to an email right away. Like, that's the one time when you're not face-to-face with someone, you can take a, a moment and you can like wait on it and you can respond later in a much yeah. better way. Cause those knee jerk email responses are they're never a good idea. You can apply that too yeah. to even in your relationship. Like there's times where uh, friendships, any type of communication where you just feel that yeah. urge where you're like, meh, 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 meh. and then you're like, okay, if I read that yeah. a little bit later after I cooled down, I'd look back at that and go, yeah. oh, I yeah, shouldn't yeah. have said that. So. Well, thank yeah. you, Lily, so much for joining us. This was really fun. Um, yeah. Can you obviously let people know where you are on Instagram because we're on Instagram. Um, maybe give them your Twitter yeah. handle. I don't think we can shout out the other platforms, but they can probably find it on your Twitter anyway. No. So. Yes. Um, my Twitter is at your fave Lil, and um, that is like the only other social media. You don't, I have. I don't really use TikTok? TikTok so. My God. I'm a watcher. I'm like one of those people that watch and watch and watch, but I don't do it. And I swear to God, if I did it, I know it would help me out. I'm just like, no, no, I don't no. Know. I'm one like, thing at I a time. I that jokingly. <laughs> TikTok is nonsense. Um, I mean, we do TikTok, yeah. but we just put up clips for my podcast because I was like, it took me forever to get on that platform because I'm like, I'm not doing these stupid fucking dances. I'm not 13. But there it's are not- actually, and it was actually Apple yes, Maps, yeah. who was like, TikTok is actually great if you, like, and also too, just in terms of like using it for your, own, like they say, find your side of TikTok. And then I started finding yeah. like great, like healthy recipes and then like, you know, advice on mm-hmm. like how to deal with your 
obnoxious toddler mm-hmm. child and like there's actually like stuff on there like whatever it is you're yeah. into like they actually have good stuff on there so I was like oh okay like no I swear to god and I, I have conversations with people where I'm like oh and then this ha- then I learned this and I learned this and then I swear yeah. it's like everything I learned oh, yeah. from TikTok yeah. and I'm like no I did a really people. cool like yeah, Christmas it's decoration thing last year and my husband was like oh that was cool I'm like I learned it on TikTok and I was like oh, for fuck's sakes and he yeah. like hates TikTok because yeah. he works like in law and he's very like concerned yeah. about like the privacy rights and stuff like that. But I'm just like, whatever. Look at our fucking Christmas like, yeah. front door. Come on, come on. Who cares if the Chinese government is stealing my identity? Look at our front door. It looks amazing. <laughs> exactly, and it's also like we're all just a cog yeah. in the wheel. Like, let's so be let's honest. just like watch our, our identities and stolen. Yeah. The series listening to us, like you, everybody knows what we're doing, and like straight up, man. It's too late, we yeah. really sold our yeah. soul to like the you know to the devil. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> all right, well, thank you again, yeah. Emily. It was such a pleasure to see you, and uh, hopefully we'll see each yeah. other soon. Yes, hopefully. Okay. okay. I will Bye. talk to you later. Bye, Bye everybody. I mean, Thank thanks you. everyone for joining us. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>